If you were to calculate the probability of that occurring just by randomly guessing, it's 0.7% of the time. Here in this file, I've aggregated over a million lines of Bitcoin price data. So this is about five years of price data. The price is collected once every minute. I'm gonna use this data to see if I can train a neural net. See, the thing is like the data isn't that good. Look, the same price, what is that? Eight min like 10 minutes in a row, no way. But regardless, it looks like it gets better. Here, they're all unique. Basically, the way you train a neural net is you have a collection of input values along with some output value or output values. You want the neural net to be able to get an output value based on the input values. So the way I did it here is I took my Bitcoin data and I converted it into the input data and the output data. So basically, each index here corresponds to an index here. I took the first 300 minutes or five hours of data and fed it the fifth hour and fifth minute for the output. So basically what you're doing is seeing if it can predict the price five minutes in the future. And I did this for every 300 minute increment all the way through till the present. Here's the code, uh, wrangle and train. Here we get the data into a local array. Next we normalize the data and split the data into both input data and output data. So what we do is we take 300 minutes for the input data and we append that onto sample output, which would be the 305th minute. Next, we calculate the low and the high of that entire sample and we use these values to normalize the data. In order to normalize the data, we're basically getting the data to be compressed down between zero and one in value. We normalize among each sample of 301 data points the reason we do that is because if you normalize the entire data set together, the model becomes very poor at predicting future price. You take your price and you subtract the lowest value in that sample set. Next you divide that whole thing by the highest value minus the lowest value in the sample set. Here you can see I'm also dividing by a factor of 10. I do this because without it, when training the data, we get gradient explosion. We do this for the entire five years of the data set and we split the data into the input values and the output values. Remember that each input is 300 minutes and the output sample is the 305th minute. Here is what my model looks like. Basically, it's four layers of LSTM and some dense layers. Notice that I have return sequences on and my dropout is 0.2. Next, we're randomly selecting data from our normalized data set. We're taking 500 samples randomly out of the first 7,000 samples that we created. Here we're training. You take the model, which is defined right here, and you pass in the 300x values in an array and your single y value output. We're training it on 500 distinct samples. Here's our 30 epics of training. Ideally, you want your value loss to be minimized over time. As you can see, it starts out at 9.9 .9 e to the negative fourth and it goes all the way down to 1.8 e to the negative fourth. That means the model got better on average. So once we have our model trained, I wanted to test the accuracy of the model. I did that by checking how often the model was correct in predicting the direction of price movement. I took 1,100 samples outside the training data set. This way we know that the model isn't just fitted to data that it's already seen and it can actually predict new data. Here we found that the model correctly predicted the direction of price movement in the next five minutes, 52.27% of the time. When comparing the model's 52.27% to other methods of predicting price, we found that the model was better. Here are some other methods to compare the model against. One is you guess the price will always go up. That was right around 50% of the time, and guessing the price will always go down was also right about 50% of the time. Next is momentum guessing. You check where the price moved in the last five minutes, and if it was up, you guess that the next five minutes will also be up. That was right only 48.7% of the time. If you did the opposite of that, then you would get 51% of the time, correct? I trained the model again, and it got slightly better just by chance, and I reran the testing phase of the model in order to really determine the consistency of the predictions. I did this by almost doubling the amount of test inputs to decrease the probability that the model just got lucky. It was able to get 1,004 correct out of 1,900, which is 52.8% correct. If you were to calculate the probability of that occurring just by randomly guessing, it's 
0.7% of the time. So here's some more detailed information on the model. You'll notice how biased the model is to predicting the price going down. It predicted the price would go down about 78% of the time, despite the fact that the price was balanced about 50-50 up and down. What's most interesting about this is that when it predicted the price would go up, it was right almost 60% of the time. I ran the simulation over 4,000 minutes to see how the trading bot performed. I did two different trading strategies. One was every time there was a buy signal, I would buy 100% of my allocation into Bitcoin. Every time there was a sell signal, I would sell 100% of my Bitcoin. That's the blue line here. And as you can see, whenever it's flat is when it's 100% US dollars. The orange line is just the Bitcoin price. And then the green line is a percentage allocation based on trading signals. So if the bot predicts the price to go up in Bitcoin, it would sell 20% of its US dollars and buy Bitcoin with it. If it predicts the price will go down, it will sell a tenth of its Bitcoin and buy US dollars. Here the price declines over a period of 400 minutes, which is um, a little under three days. As you can see in the very end, the bot that traded 100% of its portfolio every time there was a signal actually did the best. Slightly worse than that was the bot that traded a percentage of its portfolio and holding 100% Bitcoin did the worst. Here's an example of a period of time where the price goes up. As you can see, Bitcoin outperforms both trading bots. What this bot does then is just reduce your exposure. By that I mean, if you were to have a portfolio that was exposed 50% as much to Bitcoin, it would look a lot like this green line here, or the blue line. So as far as closing thoughts, it seems pretty obvious that you wouldn't be able to train a model in 10 minutes that is able to profit in a large market like this. With that being said, there are some other tricks I think I could use.